Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad Taste of Music, and today I will be reacting to the Deftones album known as White Pony. As always, the stream and the video is of course sponsored by Clout Baddies, the baddest outfits for Roblox. Uh, now, get them now for the cheap, cheap price of whatever the fuck it is, I don't know. The hottest fashion your Roblox character could ever receive. So, last time I was here, I reacted to Around the Fur, which is the album that came out before White Pony. And from what I've heard, White Pony is apparently the magnum opus of this band, at least at the time it was. And the last video, people really liked it, so I'm like, all right, you know, let's not wait. You know, because usually I'd wait, but I was like, eh, let's let's just get into it. The version today I am listening to uh, includes the song Back to School, which I've heard is not exclusive to, like, every version or whatnot. Yeah, some people say it's a bonus track, regardless. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm gonna listen to it, alright? I'm gonna listen to it. Back to school. First song. Uh, is there anything else to say? Am I forgetting anything? See, what's not, what's funny is, like, people keep saying this album's better than the last one. Um, but I, I can't even imagine what sets it apart or what, what could possibly make it better. So, I'm, I'm very curious. So, run! Is this a censored version? Give me a break up on some other mess. So there you go. Just back in school. Leaders. Right. I'm going to go back to school. This song's bad. I can't, I can't sugarcoat it. I, I don't like it. I think it's cringe. I get it's a joke song, but luckily it's not an official opener. So, I'm not going to count this against it, but I just don't really like it. The song reads to me as, High School Sucks Trauma Turned Into a Song by Deftones, and I honestly think it's really mediocre. The shrug. First official song, Fettuccine! Alright, here we go. much more like it uh i disagree of this not being better album opener i think this is the perfect tone setter this, this is amazing I, I feel like it's just whatever the hell that last song was just gets washed out with this like this the sound oh my god like it's taking what was happening and what was good about the last album and it's like even more drawn out and dark <laughs> Fettuccine is fucking amazing. Strong smiley ball and an insane, wonderful opener to this album that sets the tone perfectly. Um, it's stimulation overload. It, uh, never am, am I, like, in a single moment of this song just stuck dissecting it because it's not giving me enough. The whole thing is dark, the whole thing is creepy, the whole thing is absolutely stellar. This is an absolutely, absolutely, absolutely incredible opener. Like, I, I literally couldn't, I, I couldn't ask for a better opener, actually. Holy shit. Eh, fuck it. I'm feeling... I think that is actually like one of the best possible tone setters for this. It answers the question, what's this album gonna sound like? And it really does feel like a blend of what they were doing on the previous project, but it's even creepier. It's even... It's, someone said transcendental. I think that's a really good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Kira. So, yeah. Next song, dig uh, Digital Bath. Oh my god, you hear the production on this shit, man? You hear those drums? Bro, you hear those drums? Like I want to Legacy kind of already 
And, and I will say gave away the meaning of the song. They described it as the song is about electrocuting someone you love to death in a bathtub and getting turned on by it. It's fucked up. <laughs> Not only was that an amazing song, but it worked very well as the second track on this album. Though I have a feeling it would have worked on any spot of this album, I feel like it following the previous song, it gives more uh, context into the sound of this project. Oh my god, this, this thing is... I mean, it's elevated to the stars, dude. It's a song that, like, I, I feel like is worth mentioning that it follows a, a pretty simple formula but does it with so much, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Expertise? That it makes it feel real, grand, and like it's happening right in front of you. Uh, I'm feeling a 10. I'm feeling a 10. All right, let's uh, see where it goes uh, from here. moments where the effects take over the vocals so much that you can't really tell what's going on unless you're reading along with the vocals. Uh, I feel like matches really well with uh, not having control. I feel like it actually adds to the aesthetic and overall feeling as if the only thing you really need to understand is when you're ripe you'll bleed out of control from this song. This was... Oh damn, this was released the year 2000. Not bad. You know, I feel like I could make the argument that it goes on a little bit long, but I feel like I can counter that by saying it really beats it into your head what this song wants you to feel. It's got one mantra, it's got an incredible riff, it hits gold and it sticks with it. Honestly, I really don't have any issues. I'd give it a strong smiley ball. I thought that was amazing. I, I, I loved it. I, I was banging my head along the entire time. Next song, RX Queen. See, I like this song, but I'll admit I don't like it as much as the other ones. Um, though I still feel like it's memorable and it works on this album. The execution's pretty fine, but it also doesn't pull me in and feel as visceral as some of the other tracks. It's like I like the subject matter a lot. But it, it, it does feel like, like because I'm not getting as invested into the aesthetic, uh, it, it ends up feeling like it's dragging a little bit. Oh my god, that part is fucking... This is creepy as motherfucker. Okay, I was actually waiting for Legoshi to explain this one. Lyrically, this one's Chino talking about him being in love with a girl who's toxic to him, but he's more than willing to allow uh, himself to be destroyed by her because of her intoxicating drug-like effects on him. See, I thought this was a song about a stalker, but that actually is a really interesting explanation. It kind of explains the sound a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, drums on this are fucking nuts. Um, even though I have tiny little gripes with this song, it's just comparatively with the other tracks, I still think it's absolutely fantastic. It's a strong smiley ball regardless. I um, still think it works extremely well on the album. Uh, super creepy vibe and memorable in terms of the full experience. It feels like it's still piecing together this uh, full project really nicely. So, yeah. Next song, Street Carp.
actually like that song a shocking amount. I, I don't think that's the weakest song at all. I, I thought that was really fucking amazing. Like, it's lazy in, like, this extremely intelligent way. It's constantly repeating this mantra like it's falling off the beat, which is absolutely stellar. Honestly, it's one of my favorites. I'm feeling... Make sure you get your subscription to Clout Baddies, the hottest, baddest Roblox clothing line you'll ever see. You can get shirts that say, dump him. You get shirts that say, bad girl on it. All right? Clout Baddies. Teenager, next song. Admire my work ethic? Thank you. This song continues like this. It's going to be my least favorite of the album so far. I think that the instrumental isn't engaging enough, and I don't feel like the vocals are loud enough for me to hear what's being said, or I don't feel like what's being said is interesting enough for me to want to follow along. <laughs> See, that's the thing, though, is I, I don't think this album needed a cool down. I, I think it would have worked better if it just continued to descent. And, and I think that's part of it is like at this point it feels like having a cooldown like this is like taking me away from the experience <laughs> Song is boring as shit. It's a shrug. I don't like it. I think the electronics sound kind of dated. I don't think they get the effect across that I think they're trying to. Um... Now this one's just a miss for me. I found it to be really boring. I'd skip every time. Yeah, I, uh, this, this aesthetic change is so unnecessary for this. This ain't it. All right, next song we have is Knife Party. I think Narf, uh, Narf Party is excellent. Give it a strong smiley ball. I feel like this song wasn't doing anything to really impress me as it feels like it's kind of doing what the other songs were doing, just a little bit different. But as soon as the screaming came in, I believed that this song really took a turn for me and I started to feel uh, the, the, the full picture of it. Nah, it's not 10. Not 10, you guys. But it's really good. Really fucking good. I just don't think it's 10. Next song is called Korea. Song is very fucking good. Another ball? Strong smiley ball. That was uh, another one of my favorites. And went absolutely hard as shit. <laughs> I'm feeling. I really like these songs that just literally expand on how hard of a fucking song you can make. Like this song, the riff, the drums, and then the fucking screams. It's all just the perfect combination for me. Next song we have is called Passenger. Let's go. This next song has the Linguini sequence on it. Oh, 
Oh, I know. It's gonna be a homophobic rap battle between Chino and Maynard. This is the fucking sequel we've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is it. This is what I've been waiting for. Bro, I'm a collaboration like this. This this shit didn't happen. Like, what the fuck? Like, how often did you hear a collab like this in like the year two thousand? Shit, even today when. help with the writing on this album because they had terrible writer's block well they fucking benefited from uh from it from what i've been hearing on this project this song is this song is incredible what a, wow 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 that's good that's good I'm feeling I like that one <laughs> oh it's not even over yet it's not over not even over hold on it could still fuck it up in the last minute and 20 seconds. Don't get excited, okay? What's up with the Clout Baddies uh, banner? I'm glad you asked. Clout, ba Cloud, uh, Clout Baddies is the baddest, greatest... I don't know. I wasn't really feeling it. I thought the outro it kind of killed the the vibe and killed the mood, especially when it interrupted my commercial. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. That one. What? <laughs> I'm feeling. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the best of the album. Uh, that was a bar raiser right there. That was absolutely incredible. It was just so that was fucking incredible. Like seriously, what the fuck? Change in the House of Flies. It's a good comment. Ever realize uh, that when the album's actually good, it doesn't feel like four hours have been sucked away from you? Yeah, this album. I'm actually shocked that we're on the last two tracks. What the fuck, bro? That baseline. I watched you. I've heard this song before, I just... It was a long time ago, I don't even think I know who knew who Deftones was when I heard this track. I took you home. I watched you change! <laughs> hey, whoa, officer, chill, okay? There, there was a fully consensual uh, allowing of the change in the... Hey, 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 hey. I'm a lawyer. Oh, uh, he'll explain him. Please, call my lawyer. Uh, this is, uh, this is, this is blasphemy. Get my lawyer! Call my lawyer, goddamn it! Call my Not guilty. Constitution says you do. Not guilty. I beat the ch I beat the charges! I beat the case! They ain't, they ain't never gonna catch me, alright? Very good. I'm shocked how well that song works in the actual context of the album. Because it's a good song on its own, it's a strong single. But it's like, I couldn't really imagine this at like the beginning of the album, but at the end here, after everything I've gone through, it feels like the, the, the boiling point, like, like where things just boil over. 
the song being about changing into a fly, I don't even fully understand what exactly is happening with this song, but I'm able to put pieces together, and it's it feels sick. It feels twisted, and it's a little abstract. It's something that I would be very happy returning to. Oh, yeah, it's one of the best of the album. I'm feeling... Okay. Like what she says, this song's about becoming disillusioned, seeing someone as an angel at one point, uh, and, and seeing them change into a fly, which is something that's a lot uglier, uh, but still has wings, and uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense with seeing them change uh, as a person. Alright, final song of the album, Pink Maggot. Wow, this song, I, I see a lot of like similarities between this and the first uh, like kind of bonus track of the album. Um, but my God, does this sound work a lot better as it doesn't feel like an angsty uh, kid who had a bad experience at school. No, it's more like a kid whose life was ruined at school. Wow, that was some seriously pretentious sludge. It's a shrug for me. That's the definition. I'm just kidding. I'm feeling. <laughs> yeah, I think that was objectively the best song of the album and the most like fulfilling experience of the entire project. I thought that was insane. Like, I I thought that that was like like perfect. Every second of that was like, it, it felt like it was moving. It felt like it was, like it had a purpose. Uh, yeah, that's a 10 out of 10 pretentious sludge song. Exactly. All right. Feeling a solid five. Hey, you can't win them all. Anyways, thank you guys for- no, no, it's a solid 9. It's a solid 9 for me. I don't think it's perfect, but uh, I think that a lot of songs on here are perfect. I think that the overall experience is incredible. I think it's brilliantly stitched together. Uh, I do think this is an improvement from the previous project. I think that this is more ambitious. I think the songs that hit just hit so much harder than like some- like, like the majority of a lot of other shit they've done that I've heard. Um, this really feels like an opus, and I completely understand where people are coming from. Uh, this- this whole project feels very complete. Um, it's an hour that just flies by. It's not like like it, it it was never really a point here where I wanted the album to stop. Um yeah, I thought this was a brilliant listen. So we'll listen uh, we'll listen again. All right, with that being said, that's all I got for you guys. Um I will do another Deftones album in the future. It might be a while, but we will get there. With that being said, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.